Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. On 18th May 1974, India conducted its first nuclear test in the deserts of Pokhran in Rajasthan. Codenamed Smiling Buddha, it was a peaceful nuclear explosion. The test made India the world's sixth nuclear power after the United States, Soviet Union, Britain, France and China to successfully test a nuclear bomb. The test was the product of India's nuclear program in 1944. A team of 75 scientists and engineers worked on making the test a reality from 1967 to 1974. The test caused widespread outrage not only because it caught the world by surprise but also because India is not a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. The United States of America blocked aid to India and imposed numerous sanctions on the country. The device tested was a fission device that caused no release of radioactivity in the atmosphere. Since then, however, although India has still not joined the 1970 Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, it has signed a nuclear deal with the United States. The rest of the world has also accepted India's status as a responsible nuclear power. Today, we revisit the momentous occasion and also take a look at the progress India has made on the path to nuclear self-reliance. On 18th May 2019, India marks the 45th anniversary of its first nuclear test known as Pokhran 1. It was on this day in 1974 on Buddha Jayanti. The bomb was detonated on the army base Pokhran test range in Rajasthan by the Indian army under the supervision of several key Indian generals. Described by India as a peaceful nuclear explosion, this test was carried out underground and codenamed Smiling Buddha. Let's take a look into the events leading up to the 1974 weapon test and the events that followed in the later years. On May 18, 1974, India conducted its first successful nuclear bomb test in Rajasthan's Pokhran Desert. Calling Smiling Buddha, it was a peaceful nuclear explosion, but the test was powerful enough to put India in the league of nuclear power-rich countries. The Ministry of External Affairs designated it as Pokhran 1. Smiling Buddha made India the world's sixth nuclear power after the United States, Soviet Union, Britain, France and China to successfully test out a nuclear bomb. Pokhran 1 was also the first confirmed nuclear weapons test by a nation outside the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. 1974 test, nuclear test was called peaceful nuclear explosion and that was the practice existing at that time. The world was doing it and NPT had somewhat restricted the peaceful nuclear explosion. But the international community was undertaking the test to dig tunnels, to experiment with nuclear science, to make it useful for peaceful purposes. So India exactly did the same. Whatever many countries did at that time or before that, 1974, just to demonstrate that technology. So it was basically a technology demonstrator and showing to the world that India is capable of undertaking tests underground. It followed the nuclear international law, the international law of 1963 partial test ban treaty. But what were the events that led to the 1974 weapons test? India started its own nuclear program in 1944 when Homi Jahangir Bhabha founded the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Physicist Raja Ramna expanded and supervised scientific research on nuclear weapons and was the first directing officer of a small team of scientists that supervised and carried out the tests. Post-independence, the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru authorized the development of a nuclear program headed by Homi Bhabha. The Atomic Energy Act of 1948 focused on peaceful development. India was heavily involved in the development of the nuclear non-proliferation treaty but ultimately opted not to sign it. In 1954, India reached a verbal understanding with Canada and the United States 
under the Atoms for Peace program. Canada and the United States ultimately agreed to establish the Cirrus Research Reactor also at Trombe, an eastern suburb in Mumbai. The acquisition of Cirrus was a watershed event in nuclear proliferation with the understanding between India and the United States that the reactor would be used for peaceful purposes only. Cirrus was an ideal facility to develop a plutonium device and therefore Nehru refused to accept nuclear fuel from Canada and started the program to develop an indigenous nuclear fuel cycle. Construction of the plutonium plant began at Trombe on 27th March 1961 and it was commissioned in mid-1964. In 1960, during Sino-Indian War, India lost territory to China. Nehru turned to Soviet Union for help but in vain. India concluded that the Soviet Union was an unreliable ally and this conclusion strengthened India's determination to create a nuclear deterrent. In 1967, Indira Gandhi became the Prime Minister and work on the nuclear program resumed with renewed vigour. In September 1972, Indira Gandhi authorised the Bhabha Atomic Research Centre to manufacture a nuclear device and prepared it for a test. The preparations were carried out under the watchful eyes of the Indian political leadership with civilian scientists assisting the Indian Army. The device was formally called the Peaceful Nuclear Explosive, but it was usually referred to as the Smiling Buddha. The device was detonated on 18th May 1974 on Buddha Jayanti, a festival day in India marking the birth of Gautam Buddha. A team of 75 scientists and engineers led by the Raja Ramana, P.K. Ayyangar, Raja Gopala, Chidambaram and others worked on it from 1967 to 1974. Indira Gandhi maintained tight control of all aspects of the preparations of the Smiling Buddha test that was conducted in extreme secrecy. The decision to go nuclear was taken back way back in 1944, even prior to independence. Right? The British was still ruling India. In 1944, the decision was taken that India should go nuclear. And India started working towards it discreetly from that time onwards. Once India became independent, Nehru tasked at that time, Baba, to start working towards the Indian economy. Thereafter, lot of both centers were brought in, Sarabhai, Setna, Ayangar, Raja Ramanna, and Abdul Kalam came as a DRD representative that the 71 Pokhran one was taken. The test was a success, but the aftermath of the nuclear test was not encouraging. The test caused an immediate revival of Indira Gandhi's popularity, which had flagged considerably from its high after 1971 war. The overall popularity of the Congress was enhanced and the Congress was well received in Indian Parliament. However, according to independent monitors, this test was part of an accelerated Indian nuclear program. Although India has still not joined the 1970 Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, claiming that the nuclear tests were for peaceful reasons. The nuclear deal between India and the United States showed that India's status as a responsible nuclear power has been accepted by the rest of the world. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV India's nuclear test in 1974 was a success, but the aftermath of the test was not an encouraging one. The test became the centre of attention as there was widespread outrage and concern over the move since this nuclear bomb was tested by a country which was outside the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. And the experiments took place without any warning to the international community. Here's a detailed report on how the world reacted to India's first nuclear test. With Smiling Buddha, India became the world's sixth nuclear power after the United States, Soviet Union, Britain, France and China. There was widespread outrage among the international community as the test was conducted by a nation outside the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. The plutonium used in the test was created in the Cyrus reactor supplied by Canada and used heavy water supplied by the United States. Canada concluded that the test violated a 1971 bilateral understanding and withdrew assistance to India for nuclear projects. The United States blocked aid to India and imposed numerous sanctions. 
However, it soon concluded that the test did not violate the Nuclear Material Agreement and proceeded with the June 1974 shipment of enriched uranium for the Tarapur reactor. Pakistan cancelled talks slated for June 10, 1974. Pakistan's Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto pledged in June 1974 that he would never succumb to nuclear blackmail. Soon after that, Pakistan vowed to expedite its nuclear activity. China's reaction was equally hostile. It accused India of sparking off an arms race in the region. But France refrained from condemning India and instead sent a congratulatory telegram but later withdrew it. India also got Russia's support at the time. It was given. It is at that point of time that the NSG came into being and safeguards were brought into it. All supply of nuclear material to India was put under the bypass. However, reactions of Pakistan was absolutely volatile. Pakistan vowed that what India has done, Pakistan will follow to the end and will go the whole of in trying to acquire a nuclear bomb. As far as Canada was concerned, Canada said the plutonium came from Cyrus reactor which was played by Canada, 6 kg and the heavy water came from the American reactor. The Americans were also livid but America said India has violated no treaty obligation. Whereas as far as Canada was concerned, treaty obligation was violated and Canada stopped supplying nuclear material for Cyrus, Bombay as well as for other fast nuclear reactors that were under being put into place. France was initially very happy that India went, went nuclear, issued a congratulatory letter, telegram, but under international pressure did not review the telegram, but did not put any sort of a restriction on India's blockages. As far as Israel etc. was concerned, continued to be friendly. Soviet Union, the reaction was that of a friend because if you recall, in the 71 war, there was an Indo-Soviet friendship treaty that was signed. Soviet Union at that point of time was a strategic alliance. The Nuclear Suppliers Group or NSG was formed in reaction to the Indian tests to check international nuclear proliferation. The Nuclear Suppliers Group severely affected India's nuclear program, imposing technological embargo on India and Pakistan that was racing to weaponize itself with nuclear power. The international community also pressurized India to become signatories to the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty and the Non-Proliferation Treaty. India refused to accede to the Non-Proliferation Treaty on grounds that it is a biased legal instrument that divided the world into nuclear haves and nuclear have-nots. India is one of only five countries that either did not sign the NPT or signed but withdrew, thus becoming part of a list that includes Pakistan, Israel, North Korea and South Sudan. So, the immediately countries reacted bilaterally, multilaterally and the international or some international organizations were also activated. First, the most important and the most significant development which had taken place at that time was the making public of Jangar Committee which was otherwise existing secretly. So the guidelines were made public. Second, for many years nuclear suppliers group put on its website that nuclear suppliers group was formed because of the 1974 explosion of India. So means it led to the formation of a nuclear suppliers group. Several countries imposed sanctions. We were denied supply of uranium. Our Tarapur was denied supply of uranium. United States enacted its law that is called Nuclear Non-Proliferation Act. It was enacted because of India's 1974 tests. Then France withdrew, Canada withdrew, several countries withdrew. Again, India was put under question, or India was, India was questioned in International Atomic Energy Agency and in the United Nations, where our representatives said very clearly that this test was not meant to shatter the non-proliferation treaty, non-proliferation treaty will collapse or prosper on its own merit and demerit. So India had no intention, it just wanted to demonstrate its technology and it wants to use, it wanted to use this technology for its peaceful program. 
Since CTBT's inception in 1996, India has had a number of reservations about it. While it has stood by its demand for a nuclear weapons-free world, various principled, procedural, political and security concerns have stood in the way of its support for the CTBT. For these reasons, India has restrained itself from taking part in the treaty. India's future with the CTBT and NPT is still unwritten, but there are opportunities for it to be re-engaged and renewed. With inputs from Astha Kulshreshth, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for a short break on the program. On the other side, we'll talk about the Pokhran 2 nuclear test. Do stay with us. The Pokhran 2 test refers to India's second round of nuclear tests that were conducted at Pokhran 20 years ago. Although the test was based on the principle of using nuclear power for peaceful means, it too was greeted with a spate of international sanctions. An explosive leap 20 years ago on the 11th of May 1998 that landed India into the Nuclear Weapon Powers Club. The landmark nuclear test Pokhran 2 was conducted at the Pokhran test range in Rajasthan's Jaisalmer district. It took place on one of the hottest days of the year. When most of the world was sleeping, India entered the nuclear era. Although the decision was taken after great deliberation, the world reacted in a way that would affect the future of India. But today, what is clear is that the action was not only timely, but also inevitable. Today, at 15.45 hours, India conducted three underground nuclear tests in the Pokhran range. These tests conducted today were with a fission device, a low yield device and a thermonuclear device. The summer of 1998 was quite challenging for India's nuclear scientists. A team of over 100 scientists, around 58 engineers and soldiers were specially chosen for the crucial task. They were told to take all the measures to ensure total secrecy. The Pokhran site was under surveillance. American satellites and CIA were continuously tracking its activities. However, India was able to deceive spy satellites of the United States and other countries while carrying out the test. The tests were done under the leadership of then Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee and country's nuclear scientist and missile man, APJ Abdul Kalam. Before this, India carried out its first nuclear test on the 18th of May 1974 in Pokhran in an operation code named Smiling Buddha. The Pokhran 2 nuclear tests on the 11th of May 1998 were codenamed Operation Shakti. This day will always be remembered as a golden day as far as India's science and technology is concerned. On this day, for the second time, we were able to fool the entire world and carry out nuclear explosions. Five explosions were carried out. One was in the range of 20 kiloton, which was a total success. Another was a thermonuclear, that is a hydrogen bomb, which some people say it was a success, others say it was not a success. And there were three explosions which experimented with sub kiloton weapons of yield 0.2 tons, 0.3 tons and 0.5 tons. Consequent to this, India's voice was internationally recognized. India's importance and weightage in gained unbelievable preponderance. That notwithstanding, all sorts of sanctions were imposed on us. But India displayed a few things. Firstly, a technological capability that surprised the world once again. Secondly, that India could hold the secret close to the chest within the country and externally nobody had even an inkling that India is going to go nuclear. The American satellites were fooled, the American intelligence agencies were fooled, so were the intelligence agencies of every other country. And we were able to do what we wanted to do, much to the disconcert of the rest of the world. After its first nuclear test in 1974, India became capable of making its own nuclear bomb. But it did not declare itself a nuclear weapons-enabled country. The Pokhran 2 tests, however, brought India into the nuclear mainstream 
and open up the global nuclear market for development of nuclear power. Pokhran 2 was a series of five nuclear bomb test explosions conducted by India on the 11th and 13th of May in 1998. After these tests, then Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee declared India a full-fledged nuclear state. Although India had become the world's sixth nuclear power after the United States, Soviet Union, Britain, France and China in 1974 itself, Vajpayee's announcement formalized the status. In 1998, India conducted five tests in Pokhran. Through these five tests, India had tested a range of weapons. One was fission device, second was hydrogen bomb and third were miniaturized weapons. There were three tests for miniaturized weapons. And through all these tests, India announced its intent to become a nuclear weapon country. In 1974, India had conducted peaceful nuclear explosion, which was allowed in international law. And many, several countries had conducted peaceful nuclear explosion to experiment and to verify or validate many of their peaceful activities. So India also did the same. So the purpose of 1974 test was technology demonstration, not weaponization. On the contrary, in 1998, the tests were conducted for weaponizing India's capabilities. Post-1999, 11th of May, the day of the first of the five explosions during the Pokhran 2 nuclear weapons testing was officially declared as National Technology Day. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And let's now talk about India's nuclear history. The country's nuclear program dates back to the year of its independence. In 1947, India began to work on structuring its nuclear energy program to be used for peaceful purposes. India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru's keen interest in heavy industries, energy institutions and scientific development led to the formation of Atomic Energy Commission in 1948 to meet the country's energy requirements. It also set in motion development of India's nuclear policy program. The Department of Atomic Energy was established in 1954 to implement India's nuclear policy. In 1957, India established the first nuclear research center in Trombay near Mumbai. Ten years later, the center was rechristened as Bhabha Atomic Research Center. BARC is India's top national institute of research and development on nuclear energy in the country. India's first display of nuclear might came with Pokhran first, a test that invited severe criticism from the world, but it also showed the determination of former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi on this subject. 24 years later, India conducted its second nuclear test in Pokhran on 11th and 13th May 1998. With this, India achieved the ability to create nuclear weapons and thermonuclear devices. At present, India is self-sufficient in the field of nuclear science and technology. This includes military and civilian use of atomic power. The Department of Atomic Energy has five research centers. These include the Bhabha Atomic Research Center in Mumbai, the Indira Gandhi Atomic Research Center in Kalpakkam, the Advanced Technology Center in Indore, the Variable Energy Cyclotron Center in Kolkata, and Atomic Minerals Direct Trade for Exploration and Research in Hyderabad. 22 nuclear power reactors running in the country are generating about 7000 megawatt of electricity. Work on 11 more nuclear reactors is underway and once completed, India will be able to produce 8000 megawatt of additional power. With Leena Sharma, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's it from us in today's edition of In Depth. We'll be back same time on Monday with a focus on some other important subject. You can also watch our program online on YouTube and Twitter. And don't forget to send your feedback and suggestions about our program. Thank you very much for your time.